We've been actually in operation since 2001. Um, we just moved to town in 2008 and opened up the new facility here on the highway. Leon basically started uh, welding when he was in high school and from there he kind of graduated on, you know, had some jobs around the Great Bend area. Eventually moved back here and uh, had a business before he went out on his own here with Leon's welding. Um, so he's been basically welding for 30 some years or better. He started out with a one-man welding truck. Um, just as things progressed, you know, he needed a shop because he had indoor jobs that he could do, uh, fabricating some trailers and things like that. So out at the farm where we live, he went ahead and set up a shop. Well, then we got a little busier, so we hired on some employees. From there, he went ahead and, you know, outgrew that facility, and so we built here in town. He's actually a certified pipeline welder. Um, that's where he started out. That's why he had the truck. Um, from there, it was just people coming to him with just, you know, requests, whether it be handrails, fencing, you know, wash line poles, you know, small jobs, you know, utility trailers, car trailers. It just kind of keeps going from there. Um, we don't actually manufacture any one item in quantity. We do, but we can't say that that's our base business. Um, best way to describe us is a job shop. We implemented powder coating in 2007. Um, we just did a lot of manufacturing of handrails and fence products, things that people were wanting, you know, to finish. At that time, um, we had an outside vendor powder coating for us, but there were limitations on size and color to where people were getting a little bit more creative with their coloring. So um, we came across Rob Kramer, who was in the auto body industry before then, and he and Leon just kind of put their heads together new idea, new product, so they went ahead and we started a, a powder coat division. We started out in a little rental building with a 10 by 16 batch oven. Um, now at the new facility here we have our little bake oven as we call it and right next to it is a 16 by 36 foot batch oven. Uh, we do cattle trailers in there, combine header trailers in there, a lot of bigger projects we put through um, the bigger oven. So we might be running both ovens at the same time, you know, depending on the, the items that come in here. Uh, we powder coat our own manufactured products as well as people bringing in um, older items like lawn chairs or bed frames, anything they want redone, re you know, brought to new life. We do a lot of that and so it's anything it's off the busy. street. It does. They've, we've never really had a slow time in powder coat. Well, we've been Next Tech customers since the get-go of, you know, the business and everything with cell phone use. Um, like I said, we, we had one person's project that set out by Sandblast for weeks and weeks and we had no clue, you know, until the actual customer called us and said, hey, how's my project coming along? And it's like, oh, that was yours, you know, because we didn't want to do anything because we didn't know, you know, what the person was wanting to have done to it and everything like that. So with that in mind, we went ahead and, you know, I've seen you guys advertise for the surve surveillance and things. Um, so I contacted Nate and the difficult problem with us is that our sandblast location is rural and we're always here at the main shop. So we kind of got something going here at the shop location first for surveillance because we do park or have a lot of items out you know, on the grounds here and then he helped me tie our rural location in with our surveillance here so I can see as well at one place all at one location to see what's being dropped off and things like that. Yeah, we received a call from, from Melinda and Leon and they wanted us to come out and they knew they wanted something, but they didn't know what they needed. And so that was part of the process was coming out and seeing how they use their facility, how their employees come and go and how things are set up. And uh, so we got some of their main concerns, some of the areas that they wanted to focus on and we developed or designed a system that would provide coverage for those areas and uh, meet those needs. And uh, one of those was the remote site, which uh, kind of came down at a later point, but it was something we knew up front that, that they might want to look at their sandblasting shop. And so uh, we designed a system that allowed the Melinda to be here at the office to log into her system remotely and, and be able to review that site as well. Our doors go through quite a bit of heavy duty use. <laughs> And they get bumped and banged around a lot. Uh, we just had a lot of people, a lot of employees with keys, which they do need 
um, because they get they go out on service calls and things like that. Um, we kind of like the idea of centralizing um, the entry by one door. Um, I think the guys enjoy and appreciate just the, the little key fob where they just hold it up and go because a lot of times their hands are tied up with things you know and they just kind of stand there or wave and then they can you know enter the facility kind of helps us keep track um, in the event that they don't clock in which we have a lot of that go on they just come in get in the truck and go to their location it kind of gives us a little recourse is okay he came in at this time you know we use it for like time tracking of you know the employees on their jobs not so much you know of any you know security type thing but it's been helpful to um, isolate that um, a lot of our other doors uh, we have deadbolt locks on as well so having one access with the keyless thing helped out too because one time we had all the deadbolts locked and no one could get in <laughs> except through the glass you know the office door up front you know because someone threw all the bolts they went out through the garage door and then nobody could get in <laughs> so it, it's helped us with that. I mean, those things, you know, happen. Um, tools have been misplaced or people borrow them and they don't bring them back. And it's like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so left the shop on Saturday with that. That's who has it, you know, and they just, you know, forget to bring it back or something like that. It's just, you know, just an extra blanket of security in regards to, you know, who's liable for what. So while we were walking around the shop and looking at the surveillance, some of the concerns came up about, well, we have guys coming in on the weekends to grab tools or to work on a small little project. And it'd be nice to know what, you know, who came into the shop and, and, and be able to have video record of that. Well, access control is another growing uh, market within the security industry, and it's a new uh, offering that Next Tech had, and so we were able to uh, look at how their facility is used and how their employees use the business. And one thing that uh, comes about with a business this size that has a lot of employees is uh, they're always constantly coming and going, and you may not have the same employees that you have today in a year. And so with the physical metal keys, you can't control who's made a copy of a key and who's given that to a friend or if a past employee is coming back at a later time to enter, try to get entry into the building. And so the access control really puts that, that power in the, the owner's hands. So now they can see run reports of exactly who's come in and at what time. If an employee does terminate their, uh, their employment or their position, now we can go in and we can electronically, with the click of a mouse, remove them from the system, now they can't come back into the business. And we don't have to have the, the cost of a locksmith coming out and rekeying all of the, all of the door locks. One of the things that uh, what we looked at is, you know, a facility this size has 10, 12 doors. Not all of them need to have access control. It would be a change uh, for some of the employees that are usually accustomed to coming in one of the doors on the side or a back door that now they have to come through one one uh, one point of entrance. Uh, but that is, allows the employee or the company to minimize their costs up front by just having one door that they're that they're putting the electronic access control on and not having to outfit an entire facility. Everybody says, you know, you're going to attract attention to you by putting up cameras. And it's like, I haven't really seen one. We've never had a security issue here. I mean, and that's what Leon said. He goes, you know, you're going to get this stuff here and then you're going to have issues because, and I says, no, you know, and I haven't. I haven't seen anything. Um, we don't use it for a slap on the wrist, you're doing something wrong type thing. You know, we use it basically for our own information as a, it's like a, it's a tool. You know, it's not a, but it's a tool for us, you know, to recourse on the jobs and things like that. And, and, you know, it just helps us better service our customers, really. Most people think about surveillance cameras as a deterrent or, you know, for a theft or a vandalism type activity. Like Melinda said, she uses it for more of a business tool where she can see where her, her, where her employees are, what's going on at the remote location. So it's used for a lot more than just a deterrent or a, a vandalism type issue. It was really easy. I, you know, kind of presented my issues to, you know, the, the team, uh, Nate and, and his crew, um, kind of explained what we were wanting to do, you know, with the door, the keyless door locks and isolating just, you know, two avenues of entrance. Um, 
just watching the floor uh, to see, you know, the activity that's going on. Um, you know, if something arises out on the floor, we have different camera angles to see, you know, what incident took place, how, you know, it became a factor and things like that. Also, you know, just watching the grounds a little bit um, for some of the products that are out in our area. Uh, they came in and they just kind of uh, assessed the building, um, the facility structure and uh, the, I, the entrance sways and the, you know, the high traffic areas and then they came in and came up with a plan as to where we could get the most coverage, you know, for, you know, the security cameras or surveillance cameras and they just kind of worked from that angle and we got the picture of what we needed. One of the steps is is really sitting down with the customer and finding out those focal points, those areas that that they want to have covered and the best mounting location that uh, that the camera can catch as much of that area as possible without having to duplicate or add additional cameras down the road to provide that coverage. Um, and so we do sit down and we do talk about the budget that, that they maybe have in mind um, and maybe they don't know what their budget is. They don't know what a system costs, but we can help design something that's efficient, you know, in the number of cameras that they may need um, and still provides the coverage that they want and the image quality that they want. So that would be another big focal point that, you know, camera A may just be able to provide a broad overall view of the lot area or the job floor so they can see you know who's using which equipment or machinery but they might want something for the driveway that's more uh, resolution or ha higher resolution to be have more detail who's coming and going on the property everything was structured very well to where what I told them I wanted to know and see they you know helped and have me all set up in that avenue and showed me how to re, you know work the systems at this end to see I've got it on my phone I can remotely you know wow. see what's going on back here at the shop if I'm on vacation somewhere that's cool <laughs> that's really neat to be able to access it through my cell phone Mobile uh, devices are, are a part of our everyday life. We're always on the go. We've got appointments and meetings and, and places to be all the time. And we can't always be in the office sitting behind a monitor uh, pulling up the cameras or, or viewing the cameras. Uh, so that is one thing that we do, uh, one feature that we do see a lot of customers requesting is the ability to log in from their mobile device. And so the systems, we tie them into their, to their network um, so that they do have the ability to, to log in from that remote location and pull up the cameras in a live view or do playback view as well. Yeah, it's a very easy process. Once the technicians come in, they do all the setup and all the installation. And once they've done their testing, they'll sit down with the with the customer and do that training. Uh, and it really doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, the The systems are are easy to use. They're graphical in sense that everybody's accustomed to using an iPad. So now it's just a matter of clicking on an icon to go to playback or a live view. So we click, it takes us to that particular view. And we can set up some of those templates so it makes it easier for the customer customer to be able to see we want to see our shop cameras today um, but, or we want to see our, our remote location by clicking on the template view it takes us directly to that and it really speeds up the process on the customer side of getting to where they want to be you know with a click of a mouse very quickly sure we can always provide references for other customers uh, that are in that particular industry uh, or we can do on-site demos so that was one of the things that we were able to do uh, with our system that we have at our internal office was we were able to pull up the cameras and show Leon and Melinda the image quality that they could be expecting from the cameras that we were recommending to make sure that their expectations of what they were going to be paying for is what we are providing to them. Uh, and that's and that's big uh, when it comes to surveillance. Everybody has seen the TV shows that, you know, see you being able to zoom in on on somebody's face a, a mile away. Well, that's not necessarily always the case, um, and it's not always necessarily the need that the customer needs. So we were able to to do that demo for them.
One of the other uh, features that we're starting to see more and more is, is the use of analytics on the cameras um, or the systems. So they're starting to be multi-platform where they're tying into other uh, systems. So if it's tying into a time clock system or electronic access control system, so when a valid card read is made, that camera is, is activating to provide a view of who's walking through that door. Um, hosted services are also becoming uh, a, a talk or something that's going to be coming in the future where those services don't necessarily require as much equipment on site. Uh, so we may not have to have a server at the customer's site. And that's one of the benefits of our fiber network is as bandwidth speeds increase, we can host that server in our private cloud and be able to record to our equipment there. So the customer doesn't have that expense of having a server up front at their site. Uh, that's something that's uh, continually uh, growing uh, in need and desire. So it's something that I think as bandwidth speeds increase, we'll, we'll see that availability come to more of our customers.